Boku no Hero Academia does a ton of things right. It takes what could be a cliche simple series and turns it into an undisputed beauty. Of course, there's many aspects to this and it's not just shown and done right. And that's and that's how I will judge these five recommendations. So firstly, almost as an honorable mention, I'll put other cliche shonens that do things right, despite them mostly being long. For example, One Piece, also about a protagonist trying to get stronger and also about a really strong supporting cast. Katekyo Hitman Reborn, despite a slow start becomes an amazing series. Hunter x Hunter 2011 trumping literally every aspect of My Hero Academia aside from the cast and it's most similar in my opinion to Naruto although being quite a lot better but with the protagonists being in a very similar position and also trying to become a ninja and trying to become a hero are basically the same things with a slightly different wording. Now for the five recommendations on the various aspects of My Hero Academia that I find the most enjoyable. On one end we have the high school setting with an entire class that gets developed throughout the series and with a protagonist that grows from El Mucho Wimpo, pardon my French, to someone that could be relied on and to someone that can become the strongest hero. So first I'd like to draw a connection to Soul Eater being pretty much the same idea and also only being 51 episodes, not 17,000 like One Piece. It's an easy series to get into with a slightly lackluster ending due to its deviation from the manga. However, it also has the high school setting, it also has a fun cast, but I like the dynamic of the powers in Soul Eater as it's much more original than superpowers where squads form between two or more people, one being the wielder and one being the weapon, making for a very interesting power dynamic and needless to say, amazing teamwork, which is another thing flaunted in My Hero Academia in the Stain fight, which was, in my opinion, the high point of the series thus far. However, my major recommendation for an action anime where the cast is developing in a high school setting is Assassination Classroom. Ass class, as I like to call it, way trumps My Hero Academia as far as comedy goes and has an ending that I can't see My Hero Academia topping, to be quite honest. The story follows a high school class that one day gets visited by Koro Sensei, this creepy octopus looking dude who can move 20 times the speed of sound and has a whole bunch of various gimmicks that no one wants to deal with. So he threatens them to blow up the world unless this high school class can assassinate him by the end of the year. So their training has a definitive point and while they are of course working their hardest to pass their exams as well or else Koro Sensei will just leave them and say okay not giving you this chance anymore bye bye world. They also have to train brutally every day and try multiple multiple assassination attempts to kill this weird octopus dude that honestly we grow to love incredibly much throughout the series, making it difficult to actually even try to kill the unkillable sensei. Both seasons together is 50 episodes with a definitive ending, a beautiful ending, and a cast that develops the whole way through where everyone has their own specialty in a setting that, let's be honest, can only be in anime. It's more in the sci-fi setting than in the fantasy setting, but I think it's a good recommendation for the people that love the Hero Academy aspect and the cast in the Academy, as well as their awesome teacher of My Hero Academia. For my second recommendation, a breakdown on the superhero genre that My Hero Academia does pretty much better than any other anime in a normal fashion. This is not like the superhero movies that we get in the West, Spider-Man, Batman, where it's mainly about one superhero or a team of superheroes like in the Avengers or the Justice League that are going to take on the world and defeat various bad guys whenever they decide to show up. My Hero Academia is a universe of heroes where heroes are accepted as a profession. Anime style. And as far as the superhero breakdown, the first obvious recommendation that everyone thought of right in the beginning is One Punch Man, despite being completely different in like literally every single way from My Hero Academia. If you like the superhero breakdown, then One Punch Man is definitely for you, although you probably watched it, and if you haven't, take note, it's a comedy, so don't get too upset when you get the opposite of Deku for a protagonist. But for a more obscure recommendation that many people have not seen, despite it being ranked extremely highly in Japan itself, is Tiger and Bunny, a more mature look on the superhero genre and also with a great ending. Oh, and for the first couple of episodes, you're gonna say, wait, did he say this is more mature? And to that I say, yes, give it a minute. It's an extremely good series that unfortunately most people have not seen and it deserves some light. And to those who like Boku no Hero Academia, this was the first to show up on my list for recommendations as an alternative superhero anime. For the third category of recommendations, I have sports anime. A hell of a lot of people don't watch sports anime because why am I watching baseball if I could just turn on the TV and watch real baseball, where we actually don't know that the protagonist is gonna get plot armor and win. And I was like that too, so I'm not completely blaming you. It took a while and, until Haikyuu broke me into sports anime. So, for my major recommendation from here is Hajime no Ippo. It's a boxing anime with fights that truly surpass some of the greatest action shonens that I highly recommend to everyone, despite it being quite a lot of episodes and despite it being a little bit oldish. With a manga that's running longer than One Piece at this point, Hajime no Ippo also takes the underdog protagonist trope and hones it honestly far 
better than My Hero Academia. Just note, it's boxing, not fighting supervillains. And for alternative sports anime that I recommend that are similar to this, I would recommend Diamond No Ace for also having a similar protagonist and an impeccable cast, Ice Shield 21 being about football, and Haikyuu being about volleyball, also with a protagonist that has to develop a lot and with the supporting cast that does a great job developing as well. And for the next two recommendations, they're not really categories, they're single anime that you may not have linked or may not have heard of comparing to My Hero Academia. Firstly, I'd like to say History's Mightiest Disciple Kenichi. It's an action anime with comedy, in my opinion, also better than My Hero Academia, and with fight scenes that are just as important. Everyone has their own style of fighting that they've learned from their own individual masters, and therefore, by default, no one knows what's coming from the other guy. Very similar to the battle setup in My Hero Academia, where before the fight starts and you don't know your enemy's quirk, it is scary ass business. And also, you don't know the limitations to that quirk, just like no one knows the limitations to their opponent's fighting style in Kenichi. Kenichi, as a protagonist, is also very similar to Deku, as he starts off as a wimpy nobody and shows a work ethic scene in almost no other anime, developing into an amazing person, an amazing fighter, and an amazing protagonist. He also manages to gather friends along the way, despite not really being man enough to have any in the past, kind of like Deku does in UA. Kenichi is 50 episodes, and despite it not completing its journey from the manga, it does have an ending that I'm satisfied with, which is also a major plus for anime, especially these days. I find the actual cast slightly weaker than My Hero Academia, and yes, superpowers are really nice to see in an anime, but where Kenichi trumps MHA, in my opinion, is the master. So only two memorable teachers we know for Deku at this point is, forgive the pronunciation, Orumaito and Eraser Head. Both being good masters, both being completely opposite in personalities, and we feel like we know both of them. In Kenichi, he has five masters, each one individually being a better character than both All Might or Eraserhead in their own individual setting, whether it comes to personality, interaction with the protagonist, or just sheer badassery. Kenichi is an anime I recommend to everyone, despite no one talking about it these days, except for Briggs. Also, don't worry, this is an anime. The fight scenes won't be that realistic, but they do still have the realism that you feel like you're watching actual martial art, not like Might Guy's Taijutsu, which is literally not humanly possible. And finally, one more anime I'd like to talk about for this list, World Trigger. Also an anime that almost no one has seen, despite it coming out fall 2014 and running for 73 episodes. One thing I love about the fight scenes in Boku no Hero Academia is it's not, I have the stronger quirk, therefore I can blow firepower at you until you die, like we see at the end of Naruto that makes the whole battle dynamic fall apart. Sure, the strength of the quirk helps, but people actually have brains in this anime as well. In My Hero Academia, execution is the most important part of every battle, and in World Trigger it is as well. They fight with these items called triggers. Everyone can use these triggers, and despite some people using the same trigger, they can use them in totally opposite ways, and the battles are heavily strategy dependent, unlike most other series where the stronger fighter will win. I'm gonna segue here for a minute into JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, because it does the battle dynamic best of any anime in my opinion, but that is for another video. The story of World Trigger takes place in our regular old planet Earth, where these weird dimensional portals were opening and neighbors, in other words, different dimension people were coming in. So an organization was created to defend our dimension against these neighbors called Border. Anyone can join Border and anyone can train in Border. Border sort of acting like the UA of World Trigger and with a background cast once again being heavily important because the background cast is unbelievably good. The only aspect in my opinion that World Trigger is a little worse than My Hero Academia is one, there is a filler arc for a bunch of episodes near the end, which is abysmal. Two, I hate the protagonist of World Trigger, and while he does develop and get better throughout, he doesn't develop and get better enough, so come on. Three, the animation is not nearly on par with My Hero Academia, being that it's animated by Toei, which is one of my least favorite studios animation-wise. I hate what they're doing with One Piece, I hate what they're doing with Dragon Ball Super, and there you have it. That's my five major recommendations or recommendation breakdowns of what you should watch if you're enjoying My Hero Academia. I tried to include some obscurish stuff so that you at least have something you can enjoy. And I think you will enjoy any of these on this list. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have the most wonderful evening. I'll see you next time. Let me know if you want recommendations for anything else. I'll link up some videos here for you to click on, be it 50 sarcastic roasts on My Hero Academia, and be it an analysis on My Hero Academia, as well as something else, whatever I decide. Have yourself a most wonderful evening, and I'll see you all next time.